Hi everyone and welcome back. So in this particular playlist we are talking about TypeScript with React and we have covered at least uh, six to seven videos talking about how to add the typings for the, the functional component using hooks and writing a simple forms. We also talked about a simple Pokemon application and we have covered a couple of examples like uh, how to define the props for your functional component and how to pass them. Okay, now like uh, moving further we are going to talk about the class based components so till now we are creating a functional component but how to create a class based components and how to define the typings there that is another important things right so we'll go one by one like let's see how we are defining class let's say i'm defining a component here component x and this is a class based component so it will extends react dot component right and here we have to define our props and our state let's say i have my props uh, and i have my state and these two different types you have to define like what is your props going to contain what is your state is going to contain so i will define type uh, my props this is going to have let's say x is 70 and there is another type I have which is my state and this is going to have y50 okay sorry we have to define the types not the values so here I put x and y is also let's say string so what I did is I created a component hello and inside that I have defined the my state and my props right so my props is a new type and my state is also a new type and then I think we have to def export default hello because it might be it might be getting used and you define the render function here right a simple uh, class based component this is how it is going to be what we are going to do we are going to define our props we are going to define our state so your props is whatever you are receiving from the parent component and the state the local state what the state is going to be inside this component let's say we are now we now can define the state without constructor so this is my state is of state is of type my state and here i have a value inside state i have a y so i initialize it with 600 okay so this is number is not assignable to type string y is of type string so we can just do a double quotes now this is how we are initializing the state now you can use the same thing this dot state dot y in your jsx but now we have defined the typings for the state and the props so state is having only y attribute or let's say name which is an optional uh, that is going to be of type string you can add n number of properties whatever you wanted to put in the state and you can initialize that state and you can access that state in your components right now we, we might also be defining some increment decrement uh, or like DOM events like INC increment like you clicked on some button and you wanted to increment the value inside a state let's say I have here count which is of type number and i have initialized in the state my count which is started with zero right so there is increment method what i will do is this dot set state and i can access the value of count and what will be the new value new value will be I mean the, the new state we are going to have is count equal to count plus one right this is the new state similarly increment there is a decrement method here it just uh, you are going to decrease the count and when you have a reset let's say I have a reset method what it is doing is it is resetting the count with zero so what I will do is this dot set state again 
and I will set count with zero. This is my state object, right? Count. Count is an object property, and that that is the only thing we are setting in this callback function. Count with a new value. Count with a new value, right? Similarly, we will also be writing the DOM events like uh, you click on you are firing a change event from somewhere, like from the input text field. So how it how it is going to work? Let's say I have it somewhere. I have input type text and on change I am clicking change event value let's say I am saying here is the name so I can say this dot state dot name and I also initialize the name here with empty Okay, so we have to define change event and let's close it. Okay, so change event is placed here. Let's see what is this change event is not defined. Change event is here. Let's see this. So what we are going to do here in this, whenever you are doing on change, this change event will trigger and it will take the event argument which is going to be of type change event and that is uh, getting applied on the HTML input element so how we'll define it let's say this HTML input element and then we will do is so this should be a change event this is actually a DOM event. Uh, then we will do is this dot set state, and what we are returning is count with a new value. And we have to type cast whatever we are getting from the event dot target dot value to a numeric. So we are just changing the count. Let me just say this: I cannot find change event because this is we don't need to bind it to this this is a simple using arrow function so if I just do this to change event that will work and what is the problem here cannot find change event because this should come from the HTML DOM events right so this is how the class based components works right and uh, now we understood that in the class based component what any functional component or a class based component will have right in the functional component you can define the state inside this but in the class based component you can you will be defining the types of the state and you will be defining the type of the prop same we have the in the functional component either you are using hooks we are defining the types for the hooks either like use state use effect use reducer and all okay so that's it uh, let's see next video we will we are going to write a html form and we will see the dynamic nature of the form.